Righto, welcome back to the 40 channel. It's been nearly uh, two weeks since I've done anything on this. It's been crazy. Been to weddings on the beach, absolutely beautiful. Got really sick, wasn't corona. Then spent the uh, weekend with my boy Jack doing Spartan race. First I completed the beast, then I backed that up by doing the sprint. Came back the next day and followed up, with, finished off with the hurricane heat with my boy Jack. Incredible weekend. I know that most of you guys out there aren't into Spartan racing, but if you want to give yourself something totally different and a massive different challenge, especially uh, physically, then I encourage you guys to give it a go. It's amazing. And on top of that, I can give you a discount. So 15% off any Spartan race within Australia. Fox 15, and that'll give you 15% off any race in Australia if you want to give it a go. Anyway, let's get into this. Got a bit to learn about this 40. Right now the freewheeling hub's off. Let's take the outer hub out with the disc brake off so we can replace the disc and we can uh, continue our rebuild. Now all we've got in here is a uh, star washer with some tabs. You can see that tab is folded over just there. You'll have one tab folded over on the front of the washer and one tab folded over the back. So all we need to do is tap that back. Now if you grab yourself a uh, 54 socket, these are fairly cheap really. Listen to that rain. Take that one off. Star locking washer off. Right now, that's all that's to that. Give it a bit of a pull. You see these other bits. This is a bearing. Take this off. Alright, so we've got the taper bearing there, which we're going to replace. Now all we have to do is knock these studs out. There's two bolts on the back. Undo these two bolts. Then we can replace the disc brake. We'll knock out these seals and replace all these bearings as we're going as well. Alright, first we're going to remove these studs. Very simple. Some moldy grips. Make sure you grab below the thread. You don't want to damage this thread in any way whatsoever. Some of them are nice and loose already. So as you can see, the long part goes into the hub and the short part is on the top. You can see where I've clamped. I haven't clamped anywhere near the threads because we don't want to damage any of the threads and we don't want it to spin on the center shaft there either because we don't want to damage that as well so we want to get a nice grip but the grip's got to be just right so not enough to crush it and not too loose to spin on damage on it anyway that's something you can work out just with adjusting your vice grips well I've got one stubborn one here I clamped on here with the vice grip tried to turn it around and it didn't want to move so what we're going to do is get an M8 nut, screw that nut on, and we're going to get another one. You can use another nut, but I've got a flared nut. Gives a nice bite into it as well, it helps remove it. Lock the two bolts together. Undo. This one is really stubborn. Just before we get to the end, we're going to break them back off again. Otherwise you'll have trouble removing them. So that last little bit, we should be able to get it back out with our vice grips. Done. Next thing we want to do is we want to remove 
our wheel stud nuts. If you happen to have a shop press, you're laughing. You're going to make this super easy. All you need to do is put this up in your shop press, pump down, push them straight out, done. Easy as. If you don't have one, I don't have one, what we're going to do is a little bit more brutal. So I've just screwed on a wheel nut just onto the end. There's the wheel nut, so it's just above the top of the thread. I've got an old 21mm socket that I've sort of cut down. It was an old spark plug socket. Sitting on top. I'm going to give that a good belt. And hopefully, a couple belts and that'll come down. See how we go. Done. Now let's just carry on that same process all the way around. If you're not going to use these again, you can just hit them straight on the end. The only problem that does is it actually damages the end of the thread. Which means you have to run a, a die over that and clean it all up if you want to use it again. Which is why I use the process of screwing this on and chucking that on. It keeps everything, um, it keeps the thread all nice and clean. Doesn't damage the end of the end of the bolt whatsoever. So it's your choice whether you want to use a socket or just want to belt the crap out of it here, depending on what you want to do with it. Two more nuts here that holds the um, the rotor to the hub, 14 mil. Rip them out. Right, again, if you're lucky enough to have a shop press, man, you're set, you're gold. All you need to do is set this up in your press, press this straight out, and you're going to separate them, no worries at all. But we don't, so we're going to um, try a different approach. Show you the approach of uh, being able to do this stuff in your own shed without some of the full equipment that um, some people might have. So what I've done here is I've just sat my brake rotor up on two unstable pieces of timber. <laughs> and we're just gonna give this a bit of a hit around here with the dead blow hammer, try to release that up. Easy. No dramas. We didn't wanna hit it with our big ass hammer. Just use the dead blow hammer, that way it causes no damage. And that's it. The hub is now separated from the rotor. Start knocking out the seals and bearings. Right, I moved inside out of the sun. Plus there's a vise inside. Just gonna drop this into the vise. And then we'll pop out our seals, rip out our bearings, taper bearings and the outer races. All right, so on the back side of the hub here, we've got this inner seal. Now, there's a couple of ways you can try to pull this seal out. You can try to just pry up under here and pop it out. But as you're trying to pry one side out, you're actually forcing the other side down. What we're going to try to do is something probably a little bit easier. We're going to flip the whole thing over. Now we've got it flipped over, just going to use a, a drift or a, a big pin punch, whatever you've got. And you can see the bearing inside here. That bearing's getting replaced, so it doesn't matter. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit on the outside of that bearing, and that'll drive that seal out, and the bearing will pop out as well. Then all we'll have to do then is get the outer races out. Right, so the bearing, taper bearings come out along with the seal. Two little taps, the whole thing just pops straight out. Beats trying to pry it out. We're going to lay our drift or our pin punch on the edge, just lay it on the edge of the outer race, and we're going to tap moving our way around. So I 
Right, so that was the outer race we just popped out. There's your inner race. It just sits in, simple as. It's a tapered bearing. All we need to do now, turn it over, do exactly the same thing to get the inner race out from the front of it. I'm not doing the vise up tight. You don't want to crush anything. And we'll work that one out now. All I'm doing is going side to side. If we're looking closely. If you're sort of looking really closely, we have like a keyway slot here. It's not a keyway slot, but that's where you can get your drift or your pin punch in to knock the bearing out. It's the same with the bottom. So we'll squeeze that, clean that out there. There you go, you can see that there. It looks like a keyway slot, but that's where we're going to use that position to drive out our bearing with our drift or our pin punch, whatever you've got. Just use a couple hits each side. Taps, love taps, whatever you want to call it. Don't go crazy. And you'll feel it drop out. Too easy. Right, there you go. Both our erasers are out, both bearings are out, the seals are out. All our studs are out. This entire hub is ready to clean up. We give it a bit of a paint. Scrape the old gasket off best we can. There's a lot of gasket goo and stuff on here. Just try and clean out all that old grease. Check the difference out. Let's hit this one now, clean this one up. I'm really happy the way these have come up. Super clean, look really good. But before we paint them, we've got to uh, mask off some areas. So we're going to mask off all our machined areas, wherever there's going to be gaskets, um, seals. So we're going to mask off the top. We're going to mask off all the bottom, because that's where our rotor will sit onto there. And um, then we can give it some paint. Hang it up on the uh, good old Aussie invention here, rotary clothesline. Ready for paint. Right, well, they're cleaned up and painted. They look spectacular. Let's rip this paint, this tape off it. We'll double check all our machine surfaces, but now let's throw some bearings into it and some seals into it. We've got bearings and seals. So we need to pack this bearing chock a block full of grease. But before we do that, we can put the outer race in. Now you can get a bearing fitting tool, pretty expensive and you're probably not going to use it enough to justify the cost of it. Don't just go and pick up your big old hammer and start belting the crap into it. It's not a great idea. If you can get a nice big solid block of nylon or even uh, some, some hardwood, um, that will make life a lot easier. So we want to line it up nice and square, tap it in, and after we've tapped it in below the housing, then we can work your way around really carefully, just with a pin punch, and, and get that seated. Now I'm showing you guys how to do this at home. Uh, yep, there'll be guys out there that have full bearing installation kits. That's awesome. I've got them at work and they are brilliant. But again, the cost of them to get a whole kit to go from your little tiny bearings to your big bearings is ridiculous. And if you go and buy one just for the size of these bearings, you're gonna be paying big money. So here's your housing, out of race. Now it's pretty important, don't install this the wrong way. You've got a taper in here. And the reason the taper's there 
is so that your bearing can drop in the top. If you go and put your bearing housing, your outer race in the wrong way, you're going to quickly discover that you've done a, uh, a major mistake and you're going to be trying to knock it all out and giving yourself all sorts of hell. So if you're not quite sure, make sure the bearing fits in it like this and sit it in. You'll know you have it the right way. Take the bearing back out. Sit that in as nice a square as you can get it with your hands. Your nylon block or a bit of timber. And just tap that in. You're going to get to a point where the outer race of the um, bearing is flush with the top. This is where we need to start tapping it in with a drift, a pin punch, or if you're lucky enough, your bearing installation tool. So when we're doing this, let's just work on corners and work all the way, all the way around. Once you sort of get it square, you can just sort of keep tapping around and around to get that bearing seated in the bottom. Righto, so my bearing seated in there nicely. You actually can tell the difference in the sound when the bearing seat. Righto, so I've got the bearing seated in there. Nice and square and flat. You might have noticed I started with a big pin punch. Once I got down to the second lip, this lip here, I changed to a smaller pin punch. It's pretty important that you take your time and be careful with this. You just want to work your way around the edge really carefully. You do not want to slip and score the inside of there. If you score the inside of this, well, I'm sorry, you're gonna to have to punch it back out, get a new bearing, start again. If you score it, the bearing's gonna run on that, it's gonna fail prematurely, and you're worse off than you were when you started. Again, we wanna make sure that we put it in the right way. Put your bearing in this way if you like. Sit it in, take that back out, that way you know you're not gonna get it wrong. Sit your bearings back in the box. You don't want to get dust and rubbish on your bearings while you're doing this. Well, let's start tapping this one in. Another trick I didn't tell you about, which we'll try on the other one, is you can get your old bearing, the inner race of the old bearing, drop it into your new bearing, and use that to tap it back in with as well. We'll try that on the second hub, and we'll show you how that goes. Drop in our outer race. I'm gonna get one of our old bearings that we removed from here earlier. We're gonna sit that into the inner race. Get the second old bearing, and we'll sit that on top. Now we're gonna use that to drive down our inner race. Old bearing, old bearing, and our inner race is now seated into the hub. Right, so the inner races are in there. We'll put our bearings back into their boxes. We're not actually going to put the bearings back in until we get to that stage. You can put the bearings in now, put the seals in, that's all well and good. But if you're not going to put the hub straight back on, there's more risk of contamination. So that's a bad thing and it's going to stuff your bearings and make them fail prematurely. But what we can do is we can put on our brand new rotor. It's pretty straightforward. Line up your holes. These are your two uh, bolt holes. So let's chuck in a couple bolts. Put some new bolts in too. Bolt and spring washer. I'm actually adding a washer to this whole process as well. Put your spring washer on, your normal washer on, and screw it down. Now, what we need to do 
is drive in our wheel studs. Throw in our wheel studs. Drop them in. We'll give them a bit of a hit with a hammer. Again, if you've got a shop press, you're a winner. Nice big pin punch or a drift. So put it straight down on top and we'll just drive that in. Right, right, so it's looking pretty schmick. Really happy with that turnout. So the last thing I'm gonna do is just gonna make sure that there's no high spots. You wanna use the finest file you can find. You're gonna draw that file over, the small high spot here. Lovely. Right, so that's done. New rotor. We replaced some of the studs. We didn't need to replace all of them. We put the uh, inner race and the bearings in. We've cleaned up the hub itself. Now it's ready to go back on when we finally get around to rebuilding that knuckle. So we're not going to put the bearings in, as I said. We're going to wait till um, we go to put this on last. But if you're just wanting to replace the, uh, the rotor, that's basically how you do the rotor. If you wanted to do the bearings inside, we've covered bearings and rotor inside the hub without pulling apart the knuckle. So simple rebuild there. And then on top of that, that's when our worn hubs that you saw in the last episode, they will mount up and sit on top of your hub. So we're getting close and we're slowly working our way through and we're getting there. Eventually. Eventually we'll get to the knuckle. Righto guys, so that's a quick um, a quick video on showing you how to, if you just want to do the rotor, how to do the rotor. If you just want to do the bearings, how to do the bearings or do the whole lot if you're going at it. And we're nearly getting close to having this front end done. It's just taking ages. But anyway, appreciate your support again. Don't forget to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Hit the bell. And you can always check out my Instagram page. Give you a little bit of update there too. Thanks guys. Appreciate it.